Hi friends, it's Amy. Welcome to my bookish life. Today is August 12th, so we're kicking off my catch up date for August 13. So let's get to it. I am going to a conference this morning, which I'm kind of excited about, but also it's earlier than I want it to be, <laughs> which is so often the case, but I just got here. I'm all ready to go. I finished my, uh, the audiobook that I was reading yesterday and I had a 34 minute drive. So I listened to a new book, um, Anita DeMonte's last laugh or something like that. I, I'll have it later uh, and show you, but I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, there are a lot of F-bombs in the first few chapters, the first little bit that I've read. It's got two perspectives. One in, is in 1985, one is in 1998, and uh, the two main characters are... Um, Latina. So I'm excited kind of to see where it goes. I don't know. I, um, I'm intrigued, but I also don't know that I'm going to finish it. If that makes sense. So anyway, I'm going to go in. They have breakfast for us and it's always super tasty. So I'm really excited about that. And yeah, I'll update you later. Bye. Okay. So it has been a while since my update this morning. You don't know that, but I do. So I feel the need to apologize. Um, I really had a good time at the conference I went to. It was a religious retreat, um, professional development kind of, um, kind of, kind of conference. And I will go tomorrow as well. And here's the thing. On the way there, I read listened with my earballs to the first three chapters of Anita DeMonte Laughs, Laughs Last. And the reason that I was intrigued by this book when it was uh, book of the month in March was that it has 1985 in it and it has 1998 um, vibes. So both of those vibes were going to be here, be there. And frankly, I was just really kind of engrossed by it. Here's the thing. In the first, I mean, it says th chapter three on my, um, on my Libby app, but the chapters aren't really numbered. We have a ton of F-bombs flying all over the place. I just, I don't feel like this book is for me. And I listened to it on the way there, most of the way home. Part of the way home, I was leaving a voice message uh, for my friend. But I don't, I don't think this is an Amy book. I am really intrigued by it, but I can't handle the amount of swearing that has been in this thing. I don't really understand where it's going. I, I just, I, I feel like I gave it a shot and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get rid of it. So I also feel like I wasted all my time listening <laughs> this morning and I have a lot more driving to do tomorrow because I'm going back to the conference and I also have book club and my book club is a little bit of a hike for me. So what I want to do is I have some books that I have access to the audiobook. Okay. My hold for happiness falls just came through. Um, happiness falls by Angie Kim. This is like a neighborhood, mystery something or other a portrait of a family in crisis but I don't know I'm a little questioning this one as well 
Uh, and then We Are the Brennans. I'm kind of questioning this one. I don't know. This is my shortest one. This would be, except for um, We Are the Light or something. I don't know. I was going through my Book of the Month books and I decided to uh, unhaul. It was, I don't, I, I can't even, it was by Matthew Quick. I decided to unhaul that. That would have been my shortest one. This is now my shortest one. Um, I wanted to read it with Destiny. I want, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see. I'm gonna see. I don't know. I haven't heard a ton of stuff about it. So I can't say that I've heard a ton of good or a ton of bad. I just don't know. So, um, the audio for this one is on Everand. So I was gonna just kind of preview it. How to end a love story. This is going to be one that I test last if I do, uh, because I do think that I'm going to enjoy this. It has a script, Hollywood uh, script writing theme to it. Just got it in April, and I, I think that I'm going to like this one, so I may or may not um, preview this one in this. Uh, and then the paradise problem again, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to enjoy this one, at least for what it is, but there's a part of me that kind of wants to listen to it and it's on Everand. So I might do that. Um, the paradise problem by Christina Lauren. And then, uh, the secret book of Flora Lee by Patty Callahan Henry. This is historical fiction. It takes place in London, um, during the second world war. And the children of London were evacuated in England. I do actually think that I'm going to enjoy this one. I do have the audiobook out from the library, so that might be a good one for me to do for this. So this one, I'm, I'm putting this in my unhaul pile. I don't know if anybody wants to try to convince me otherwise. It was a Reese's Book Club pick. It's obviously got some positive praise. I just don't think that it's for me. I'm going to go ahead and start Happiness Falls um, and see how I feel about this one first. So I'll let you know. So starting as soon as I started reading this, I was like, oh yes, I remember. I remember what it was that drew my attention to this. We have uh, dad who is missing Mia and her twin brother, John, they're 20. It's during 2020. So the pandemic is like happening. It's June of 2020 and their dad is a stay at home dad and their brother Eugene has a lot of developmental, um, delays. He's on the autism spectrum and he has like this a AS which is really, really, really rare and especially rare for them to happen at the same time, but it does happen. Apparently, I don't know, according to this book. And, um, so their brother, their brother has some special needs. And so their dad is a stay at home dad. Mom works like that's just kind of, you know, they're normal. And Mia is the one that is narrating the story. And I really love Mia's voice. She is just very matter of fact. She's very, okay, so maybe I'm the reason the search for my, for dad has taken as long as it has. Like she's very matter of fact. She's very to the point. Um, and then she was like, I also like to go on tan tangents. So when I'm going to go on a tangent, I'm going to add a footnote. And so that there's like footnotes at the bottom that gives more information. The mosaicism makes him less affected without some of the most severe symptoms that can plague AS kids, like seizures and difficulties walking and eating. And then the footnote is, on the other hand, autism makes Eugene less social and communicative than other AS kids who crave social connection. In fact, I've heard people describe autism and AS as opposites because of the stereotype that autistic people are emotionalists and not sociable. The doctor who diagnosed Eugene said that AS itself is rare enough, one in 20,000 20, live births. So with the mosaicism variant and the dual diagnosis of autism, Eugene was a true one in the million 
one in a million Marvel, which I think was supposed to make us feel better. And Eugene and dad went into the woods in the morning and at about 11.30, Eugene came running out of the woods at top speed, which is something he kind of struggles with. And Mia saw him and went to run and give him a hug and like celebrating that he was running or, you know, doing well. And he ran into her and shoved her down. And she just kind of sat there because her boyfriend also broke up with her that morning. So she just kind of sat there. She heard somebody walking up the, the driveway. She figured it was her dad. And um, she was kind of miffed that he didn't stop and say hi to her. But then, you know, she just also didn't say hi to him. So, yeah. So now they've gotten to the point where they've realized that it wasn't actually dad that she saw. It was somebody else. And all of this time, dad never came home from the woods. And they don't know what to do. And they're about four, four hours late in searching for him. This seems very readable, I think that I'm kind of going to get hooked into it. I'm going to want to know what's happening. I really love the fine, the family dynamics that I'm seeing in here. And I think that it's very intriguing. So this is definitely one I think I'm just going to continue. Um, plus it's one that I have from the library. So I only have it for a certain amount of time. So it's kind of perfect like that. But um, I'm going to preview... Um, the Secret Book of Flora Lee by Patty Callahan Henry as well because this one I also have checked out from the library because the last thing that I want to do is listen to an hour of audiobook that I am not into and be stuck with nothing to listen to with my earballs. So <clears throat> that's what's happening now. Okay, so I know <laughs> I said I was going to do the Patty Callahan Henry next, but I really like, I'm interested in that one. I know I am. So I decided to pick this one up and I don't know how I feel about it. I just, I mm, like, I'm interested, but I'm not like, it just, there's, an Irish Catholic family and they've got a bunch of secrets and it starts with a, a drunk driving incident like that's the first thing that, that happens and I don't know if I like that 30 of my friends and family have read it oh my gosh Sarah from Sarah's nightstand gave it five stars Five stars, five stars, 4.5 stars, four stars. Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library gave it 3.75 stars. It has a three point, what is it? 3.81. Honestly, I read two chapters and uh, <laughs> the audiobook is so short. I have like three hours left on the audio. Like it really wouldn't take much to finish it. I feel like I'm intrigued enough to not completely dismiss it. So I think I'm going to not get rid of it. I don't know if I'm going to keep reading it right now though. Uh, this is the winner. This is the one uh, when I was going through and I was looking at my books. Uh, we are the light. I It just I, I did, I read a little bit of it, um, and it just was weird. I don't know, like, it just didn't seem like a me. Uh, so this is actually, um, gonna be off my shelf. So I do, um, I do have these two that are gonna be off my shelves. Um, these two are staying for right now. This one definitely is the one that I'm most intrigued by at the moment. There's that. Now I think I, I will dig into the Patty, 
Callie, the Patty Callahan Henry. Yeah, and I think the next time I check in, I'm gonna actually pick another, draw another card because for Deca TV Arathon, because I haven't, um, I actually did use um, exception to the rule as a friend pick. So, which was one point. And I'm in the middle of yours truly, but if I can find another book that's going to go with that, you know, that would be cool. So I think I'm going to draw another card just so I have another card drawn. And this is going to be the next one that I'm going to try. I love um, The War That Saved My Life, which is the evacuation of the children from London. And that's where this starts with 14-year-old um, Hazel and 5-year-old Flora evacuated from their home to a rural village to escape the horrors of the Second World War. So that's, you know, the basis of the war that saved my life, and that's where we're starting here. So I am very intrigued by this one. I don't see myself getting rid of this one if I don't continue reading it. So at this moment, there's that. This may or may not be the, the last one that I try. I, I do think that I'm going to keep going with Happiness Falls. Because it's really, it's just really intriguing and I love the voice in it. So I think, I think that I might be continuing that one. But I do want to give this a try at least uh, since I do have it checked out from the library on Libby. So there you go. All right. I am very intrigued by this. I read two chapters. The first chapter starts in October 1940, and it's Flora, and she's by the river, and she's talking about how her sister told her to stay away from the river. The second chapter is in 1960, and we have Hazel, who is the sister, uh, is working at a bookstore in London um, on Charing Cross Road. It's actually her last day. She's going off to another book-related um, spot. But uh, she is going through the new acquired books, and it's Whisperwood and the River of Stars by Peggy Andrews. And Whisperwood is the name of the imaginary land that her and her sister created when they were kids. And it says, before... Flora was lost to the river. Uh, so that's really intriguing. And then we go to September of 1939 is chapter three. So it's going to play with time a little bit in what I kind of think is going to be a really cool way. I also love this cover. Kind of very excited to see where this goes on. Let me just look at the Goodreads for this one. The Secret Book of Flora Lee has a 4.07 on Goodreads. Let's see if any of my friends have read it. Friends are following. Okay, so Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library gave it four stars. Katie from Life Between Words gave it four stars. Uh, Mother Goose Librarian didn't rate it, but said, wow, this book is amazing. Most of the people on my list gave it four or five stars. A couple gave it three. Okay, cool, cool. So these two are the ones that I was the most intrigued by. Let's see what card I pick because that actually could change things a little bit here. <laughs> you know I should look I should look up Anita Anita Demonte. Okay. 3.82 Do I know anybody that's read it? Ann Bogle gave it five stars. That's it. That's that's it. It's the only person I know that's read it. And then the first 
review is one star. Writing wise, this book deserves a much higher rating than I gave it. However, oh, I refuse to give a higher rating to this book because Anna Man Dieta's family, of whom this book was heavily inspired, wasn't consulted and did not appreciate how Anna's legacy was framed within this book. See, now that, e that made me even more intrigued to read it. <laughs> That's crazy. Not a great attitude to have. I got my Coke Bears. Six. Random read. Random color generator, random letter generator, randomize entire TBR. Okay, I'm not doing that. Let's do a random letter. It's gonna be horrible quality, but we're gonna go to letter picker wheel. All right, so I got the letter K. Um, this is by Angie Kim. And this has a K on it. Is it supposed to be, has the book, has a letter in the cover or in the title? Author's last name. But I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with um, Angie Kim because it's just like the author's last name. Like I know that works. Uh, whereas the K on the cover of this is the last letter of a word. So I think I'm gonna go with happiness falls. So I will uh, start by continuing this tomorrow and I think I am going to try to read this this month, whether I read it for catch up a -thon or not. I don't know, but I think I'm going to try to get to this one this month. Uh, we are the Brennans. I'm still, I'm still iffy on that one. I don't know. I don't know. Destiny, what do you think? <laughs> Destiny, <laughs> read the first chapter, <laughs> first two chapters and let me know what you think. Um, I could see continuing it. Cause it's, I mean, it's short enough. It's not like it would hurt anybody. Deck of TBR at that. Okay. In terms of my other reading tonight, I read a little bit more of my cozy mystery, um, Dancing with Danger by Kimberly Greggs. I am really enjoying that. It's cute and I'm liking the characters and I am past the 100 mark. 100 pages on yours truly and I'm really enjoying yours truly one thing I, that I love 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 about Jacob his anxiety feels so real to me like I am right there as he's sitting there and he's interpreting every message every interaction and trying to overthink it and overthink it and overthink it and it's just like oh my gosh this is me and one of my friends constantly is just like you're overthinking again and I'm like I know <laughs> it's just it just is but what another thing that felt really real to me is that one thing Brianna says to him, it's interesting to me that you feel comfortable in the ER because I feel like that would be really anxiety inducing for you. And he was, he said, but that high stress situation where I don't have time to second guess my choices helps me focus and I don't have to think about all of the other options because I don't have time to think about all the other options. So real, like hundred percent. I feel like Jacob is my spirit animal. He just, <sighs> J Jacob is, oh, I, I love him.
I love Jacob. I want to meet Jacob in real life and I want to give him a hug. And I want to tell him that he's a wonderful person. I just do. I just do. And I also love Brianna for how she treats him and makes him feel centered. And I think I have friends in my life that do that for me. And I can see how much it's helping Jacob to have Brianna center him. And I just, I know that calming effect <laughs> that your centering friend can have. And I, I, I love that. So, um, actually, actually makes me a little emotional to think about. So, but anyway, I'm loving this and I cannot wait to keep going with this. That's all I have for you for today. I would love to know how your day went. What do you think about the, the books that I did for my try attempter? So that is these two I have decided to unhaul. Uh, I didn't really talk a whole lot about this one. Let me know if you have heard of this, if you liked it. I mean, let me know. I, you know, whatever. This one also let me know. I, I just don't know. I don't know. Um, but I can always check it out. I don't need to own it in order to read it if I decide to read it later. Okay. This one, We Are the Brennans, I'm kind of half sold on, um, but not really. These two I am very sold on. I'm really looking forward to Happiness Falls and really looking forward to The Secret Book of Flora Lee. I think both of these are going to be great. I love the bookishness of this one. I love the mystery and intrigue in this one. So I'm really excited for both of these. So let me know what you think of any of those books. Do you agree with me? Do you think I need to give some another chance? <laughs> let me know. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Commenting, liking, and subscribing really help my channel grow. And I so appreciate you for doing that. I hope you're finding something wonderful to read. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.